and we are finally live. <laughs> Sorry to anyone out there who, uh, you know, bared with us through these technical difficulties, but also thank you so much. We'll give it a few minutes for anyone who left and is going to come back to get uh, to come here for today's session. But um, but if you stayed with us over the last, you know, X amount of time through these te technical difficulties, thank you so much for your patience. We really appreciate it. Um, and we'll start with uh, Molly and her set, her last of three webinars shortly. But if you're here right now, while we wait for a few people to come online, um, feel free to tell us where you're from. Um, you know, we, as always, we love to see who's joining our webinars and where from around the world, you know, we get people from the UK, perhaps, or Australia, sometimes, you know, somewhere in Scandinavia, and also obviously all around the US too. Um, Molly, do you think we're gonna get some interesting, interesting cities today? Yeah, we had, we, we had Belgium last week, so I'm curious what will be the surprise today? Oh yeah, I'm sure we'll have some sort of surprise, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes before anyone. Uh, I hope we got someone from Nebraska. We got Charlotte. Hello from south of England. There uh, we go. Fun. Um, thanks, and all you guys that are here. Just like I said, thanks so much for for bearing with us. I know it took a little bit a little bit of time for us to get here, but we got here nonetheless. So that's great. Um, good morning from the Redwoods. Good morning to you too. Ontario, Canada, not too far from me. We're really, people are rolling in, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get we'll get started. It seems like it seems like we got a bunch of people here already. Thanks so much for everyone. I mean, already a bunch of eyes, and it was definitely a little bit of a difficult difficult start for us. But um, that's all. Right. I mean, we already have a decent amount of people. I think uh, Molly that. You know, we are pretty ready to get started. Okay. New Mexico, Seattle, oh, what else? Missouri, San Francisco. Yeah, we're just getting people rolling in. Um, well, I guess with that, we'll begin. Um, so thank you to everyone who is here um, and also everyone who will be joining us later with the recording. Um, I'm Matthew and from Photomine and welcome to Organize Your Photos Once and For All with professional photo organizer, Molly Bartel. Uh, she's the co-founder of Pixology and today's session is the third and final chapter of Molly's masterclass. So um, if this is you know, your first session, welcome and um, we'll be sure to send along the first two to make sure you can get everything that you need uh, to organize your photos once and for all. Um, if this is your, you know, your third of three or the second of three, again, same thing. We'll make sure to send everyone everything, all these clips. You can be sure to have, you know, from point A to point Z of Molly's masterclass. So you can really feel comfortable when organizing your photos. Um, like I said, if you, if you miss these parts, uh, there's a couple of ways we'll send them to you. We, uh, you can A, look for them on our Facebook page where um, you can find them under the videos tabs once uh, once we're finished here specifically, and the older ones will be under the videos tab also. Um, you can also find them on our Facebook page uh, where we'll make them live for you all after once this last session is done. We want to give everyone who's you know been to these webinars a chance to see the videos first, and then we'll open up to everyone. Um, after after this uh, webinar is over, uh, as I alluded to, and as many of you I'm sure know already, we'll make sure to send an email with a recording of this and a couple other links about Photomind, about Pixology. Um, so you can look out for that and that'll have a link. Let's say you have to step away at any point um, or you have friends you want to send it to, obviously you can do so. Um, and lastly, if you stumbled upon this webinar, you just happened on our Facebook page or found it on you know social media or something, um, and you have any questions about any of the webinars and you want some of the older parts, uh, feel free to reach out to our support team. And also in general, reach out to our support, me support team with any questions about Photomine at support at photomine.com. Um, and lastly, before I finally let Molly take over after this nice long delay we had, um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please, please, please write them in the chat on Facebook and we will be happy to answer as many as we can. At the end, we'll have a little Q&A with Molly. Uh, and that could be about Pixology and anything she's talking about, or it could be about Photomind specific things too. Um, so without further ado, Molly, let's take it away for part three. 
<laughs> thank you, Matthew. And thank you to Photomine for letting me share a little bit of what we have learned at Pixology in organizing photos. We've been doing it for over 10 years. And uh, today we are on part three. So to set the stage for you, in case you haven't been here all along, the first week, back on July 12th, we had an introduction and I gave an overview of photo management programs and options out there. I also provided the roadmap to our photo organizing plan and just introduced it to set up us for the second week where we learned about finding it all, organizing it and curating it. We covered both print and digital picture organizing and it was a lot. And we'll be able to answer any questions that might've come to mind after that. Today, we're gonna be talking about using and saving photos. And we're gonna talk about handling tech issues because Darn it, <laughs> those tech issues really can set you back and, and we wanna be able to tackle them and move forward when that happens. Now, just to remind you, we have worked on the FOCUS acronym, okay? Find it all for F, organize and curate for the O and C, use an S, use your photos and save your photos, FOCUS. Normally, the people that I meet have many moving parts in their photo collections. You know, there's videos and there's slides and negatives and so many devices that we've accumulated over the years. It's hard to kind of keep it all straight. So we really want to focus on the task at hand. And while we do that, you know, my goal is to have the simplest maintainable workflow because Life interferes and sometimes we set aside our photo organizing project for a couple days and then all of a sudden months have gone by and sometimes even years. So we have to remember what we were doing so we can jump right back in. Now, the first um, part of the Pixology photo organizing plan is this section that we went over last week. So we we're finding it all and organizing and curating the digital and print photos. All right. And then eventually our goal is to get them to the master photos folder and then potentially choosing a photo management solution where they can all live. For some of us, that photo management solution might be the original, you know, the master family photos folder. Other people might want to have a, a photo management program, and some people may choose an online photo storage solution as well. I like to really stress this section of the roadmap is so important. Many times people jump ahead to, whoops, to using their photos. And I'll show you what that looks like on the roadmap uh, in a second. When, when we don't do the work of saving our photos properly to our computers, into that one location, you can use your picture, you can share it, you can make a photo book, but then in two, three, five, or 10 years, will you be able to find those photos again? So I really emphasize, you know, with my clients to focus on getting this part done and persevering through it. So let's talk about using your photos, because honestly, that's where the majority of us spend our time. You know, we're sharing pictures and, and, and making wall art and ordering quick photo books for gifts. And we're really good, I think, at using our photos. And in this area, I've kind of identified four ways that we use our photos. We're editing them, we're referencing them. You know, all those pictures we take for information or for shopping purposes that we think we're gonna come back to or a recipe we're gonna make. We're also sharing our photos, like I mentioned, and creating things with our photos. So let's talk about that a little further. With editing, the types of ways that you can edit pictures, at least in my mind, is first, you're gonna 
possibly edit the picture. You want to crop it to get just that right section, or you're going to adjust the image with filters and make it brighter or something like that. So you're going to edit the actual, you know, the picture. You also may edit the metadata. This is the tags, comments, or descriptions, adding the date taken if you've scanned a picture. This is the information, you know, that can be connected to your photo digitally that someday people may re refer to in the future. Very important to be able to edit the metadata. And then some pictures, especially the old vintage pictures that we might find from, you know, decades, even maybe a century ago, may need restoration. And that type of editing usually requires some skill with Photoshop or even hiring a professional. We're going to focus on the first two. So editing the picture, uh, you can use an app like PhotoMine. And I just uh, have this scan of my grandmother as a little girl in the, the, the skirt there. And when you have your picture open in the app, you can click on the three lines up at the top with the, the, the circles in them to edit the picture. Alternatively, my eye was drawn right to colorize this photo. So I clicked on that. And that brought up the colorized picture nearly instantly. It's amazing to see your photo come to life. You know, your, your, your grandparents and great grandparents like this. So this is editing the picture and apps, you know, like PhotoMind have a lot of features and you can see at the bottom that there's a rotate and crop and then the star allows you to do other things with it. So the point I like to make about this picture is I have, you know, clearly a very precious moment of time here. And if I don't make sure that I have that photo saved somewhere else, how will I know that my great grandchildren will have this photo and the story that goes with it? So uh, apps are great and photo mine, you know, you can do this with slides and negatives as well. Now, another example, if you go online, like forever permanent storage, you'll open the picture and when you edit, you might get some options along the bottom, transform filters, adjust. I It drives me nuts when people put frames or stickers on their pictures because I just... I'm maybe I'm old fashioned, but I just want to enjoy the memory. So you might see that. And for those of you who want a full editing program that's not quite as uh, professional level as Photoshop, Mylio is a program that lives on your computer. And you can see down the right hand side that there are all sorts of things that you can work with on your picture. So those are editing the picture. And you'll need to make the decision whether you're going to save the original as well as the edited version. The other thing that we edit is the metadata. So here, this is just showing how it's done in the online example with forever. You can see there's been added a description and the date taken was changed and some tags have been added and there's a little bit more information there available to you. Okay, and on a computer program like Mylio, it looks a little different and the words that are being used for the metadata are different. So here it says keywords, sometimes tags are referred to as keywords and I have a description here. And what it, the box actually says is it calls it the caption. So you um, might see some different terminology being used. Now, I want to caution you, be careful. <laughs> Because you can spend a lot of time editing photos and adding metadata to find out that your changes are only visible in your program or app, all right? Or you might lose all of that work when something changes. Perhaps you have a new computer and the software didn't transfer exactly as you expected, or there's been an, an update to the program that changed the structure, you need to be careful and really be sure that the work you're putting into this, you know, is going to be around, okay? 
So that is editing the pictures. The next area that we use pictures for is sharing. We are sharing photos. I don't, I, it could be daily. I'm sending a picture of something to somebody. When you share a photo, it is best to send a link to download the full size photo or photos, okay? And in the middle example, the example in the middle with the St. Louis Arch, you can see there that the bottom picture, the tiny one is sent as the picture itself. That is a very small version of the photo. The link up above allows for the receiver to download the full size photo. And when you have a full size photo, you can you know, make poster size pictures in some cases, all right? Uh, the worst case scenario is you know, you got a, a picture from a family reunion and you found it in your text messages from two years ago and they sent it as the small photo and you can't even make a good four by six out of it. So you so share the link. All right. Uh, the, the, the arch is an example from the Android phone. And then the rainbow on the end is um, 16 photos that were selected and when you select your picture to share or pictures to share, you can just scroll down your options and look for the create link option or something similar to that. That way, you know, the person can download all the rainbow pictures <laughs> that they want. All right. When you receive shared photos, usually the pictures will save on your phone to the photos app and on your computer, they'll usually save to your downloads folder. If you have a, a small size version of the picture, try asking your family member or friend to send the full size version, you know, through a link. All right. And then when you've got it in your photos app or in your downloads folder, make sure it gets over to your master family photos folder so that you can find it again when you're ready to use it for a special project or to reminisce with somebody. Next up, referencing pictures. We take pictures of credit cards, insurance cards, work photos. You can see the list there. I have seen people take pictures of their entire clothing closet for because they wanted to be able to reference the, the, the outfits they were going to wear. I have videos here from voice lessons. We're always taking pictures, you know, that we might want to come back to. And I uh, in some cases, I do put these photos in a photos for information folder in my master family photos folder. Other times I rely on my phone to group things together. So both on an Android and on a, an iPhone, you can have uh, folders of albums. So in this example, you can see I have work photos. It says seven. That's not seven photos. That's seven individual albums within a folder. And, and I can go in there quick and grab pictures that I need. If we scroll down my albums, you'd also see my photos for information, which has a picture of my Office Depot card and my movie card for when we want to go get popcorn and get a little discount on it. So the photos for information, you know, it is a, it's just a part of our lives. For most of us, we're just taking pictures of a lot. And some of it we do want to keep around and some of it we could potentially delete. Then there's the creating with your photos. And I cannot believe how many things you can put a picture on. This example here is on a shower curtain. It never really would have occurred to me to put a picture on a shower curtain, but these are kind of cool. And you can find pillowcases and a lot more. Typically, we are making photo books or wall art, cards and mouse pads. I will tell you that it's nice when you can save your project, you know, with the company that you're ordering through and rely on that project being there for the long term, especially if it's a photo book and you decide that you want to add more pictures to it or you need another copy of it. 
some companies will not save your project if you don't order for a period of time. They might delete it. And some companies go out of business. I actually lost at least 15 photo books that I created in the 2010, like 2013 to 2015. And the company went out of business and I did not have the ability to have that photo book be downloaded to my computer. So something to think about, all right? So that's all of the ways that we use your photos. And actually, I probably missed some, <laughs> but those are the main ways that, you know, I have found that we're using our pictures. And again, we spend so much time in this area. Don't forget to make sure that you can find those photos in your master family photos folder in the future. That leads to the last part of focus, all right? And that's saving your photos. So I have the icon here with a family tree in it very specifically. I'm not talking about just saving your photos for you know a, a rainy day or I, I want the pictures to be available for generations to come and not just the pictures, but you know, some of the stories and the the, the videos and even the old family reel-to-reel -reel film, even some documents. So when I have talked about organizing, you know, your, especially your print photos. Uh, I'm referring to all that media, you know, can be in one place because documents often are just as important to helping tell the stories that are in the pictures. So with saving your photos, in the beginning of our masterclass three weeks ago, I said that the definition of a saved photo is you can find it when you want it, all right? And I would hope that after you've gone through all of your printed pictures and you, you've worked with your digital photos to have them organized, that you have found the majority of what you were looking for and that you can pull it up within a few minutes of, of wanting to find it. Second, that you have that photo or video or document backed up in three places. And third, you know it will be around for future generations. So let's talk about backup. I, I hope that I have mentioned that it is important to back up your work throughout this whole process. So there are uh, types of backup, and I am talking about backup, not syncing. Syncing is the verb that we use when, when we are syncing folders with something online or syncing devices. Syncing means when you delete a picture from one place, it deletes everywhere, all right? That's different. We're talking backup. So in the first column, I have manual backup, and I've simply connected a Western Digital My Passport to my computer. And I know it looks a little small, but there it is, Western Digital Passport. And then you can see that I have four folders here of backups of my work. So if you remember, in our organizing process, we had the photos to organize folder, we have the scanned photos folder, and we have the master family photos folder. Eventually, you should just have the master family photos folder, but while you're working on organizing it all and bringing it together, you'll have three. So you're gonna wanna create a folder on the external hard drive with the date that you're working on it. So like today it would be you know, July 26th, 2022. And then I'm, I call it photos backup or photo work backup. And then I copy those three folders, the master and the scanned and the photos to organize right in to this folder on my external hard drive. It would be horrible to have a computer failure and you didn't have the work backed up. So that's manual backup. It might take longer because you're copying everything. But it is the simplest to work with if you do have a, a computer failure. Then there's automatic cloud backup. So I have a screenshot of iDrive, but Carbonite is out there and Backblaze. And it 
literally backs up everything that's on your computer to a cloud site. And you can actually you know, monitor, you can tell it to back up right now, or you can schedule it on a daily basis so that it just happens automatically. All right. And know that anything new that's added gets added to the backup. So if you, you know, move pictures around to new folders, the new the folders will be having those additional pictures in the cloud backup. If you were had to restore your working fo folders, it would be kind of messy because eventually, you know, you're working with your photos to organize folder and as you clean that up, those pictures move to the master family photos folder on your computer, but in your backup, they will be in both places in this automatic type backup. All right. So that's why having the manual backup is um, real helpful. The automatic backup option in the third column to an external hard drive you can do this as well it, on a pc it's file history and on a mac it's time machine all right and the same thing uh, with the pc it's adding the pictures to the folders as you work it'll back up the new pictures that show up in a folder now for some of you if you can keep it straight there the syncing programs could help you you know with your photo work, but I tend to let that go because I've seen people get confused with OneDrive and Dropbox and what's saving where. So I, and when you install those programs and use them, it changes the folder structure. And honestly, um, I know that tech companies mean well, but we're, it's, it's easy to mess up your folder structure and it's hard to clean it up. So that's why I really like the manual backup. In this day and age, it, it, it seems like it should be um, like you could do an automatic backup, and, and uh, but it gets kind of complicated. So this is, I recommend to my clients are these. Now, these backups uh, are great, you know, so you have the, you, you have two or three of these options. You can also, have this backup um, forever is permanent photo storage that's guaranteed for generations and we use this with our clients a lot and when pictures are uploaded to forever they can have albums that mirror your folder structure not only is your work you know preserved it's easy to share with other family members and you can create photo books and, and, and photo gifts as well there and know that your photos are safe for generations to come. So that is saving your photos, all right? Like the whole kit and caboodle, we've gone through this whole roadmap and there's a lot here. And some of my clients, I've seen them get through all of this in six months. And some it's, you know, more, more over a year. And the thing is, is we are always taking new pictures, right? So I thought it would be helpful to tell you about a key habit. <laughs> You need to save last month's photos, all right? No matter where you are on that roadmap, if you can get into the habit of saving last month's photos, you're gonna be doing yourself a huge favor, all right? And I also put in here, or a new batch of scanned photos. You know, you, you use your PhotoMind app and you've got your pictures, you know, digitized. Um, we wanna have them uh, saved on our computer, okay? So the first thing that we do, I've got the two windows up here, and I actually use a, a Mac, so I use my Finder, and I connect my, my phone, all right? So Apple iPhone, and, and I actually want to clarify that. There's a little bit of a different process with the Mac, and if you want to know more about that, if we have a question about it, I will answer that later. So for a PC user who has an iPhone, you have um, on the left-hand side here, the iPhone's connected, and I've selected all the pictures that I took in April of 2022. 
All right, I have 117 photos and videos selected. On the right hand side, I have the Master Family Photos folder. I'm in my 2022 photos folder and I have an April folder in there. So I have selected all of these on the left and I drag and drop them into the April photos. It's copying the pictures over. So we let that go and it, it copies over. And now um, I have my folder here cleaned up. So you know 117 we're copying over here. I didn't need to save 117. I actually deleted the screenshots, the repetitive pictures, and I'm left with 57 photos and videos for the month of April. That's super manageable. I, I kind of tell people, you know, a hundred's a good amount <laughs> to have. But um, 30 to 100, you know, that's, that's reasonable. Now, I know some of you might have young children, and uh, sometimes people end up having 500 photos a month. And I would just ask you to think about, do you, you know, maybe take a few less pictures. I know it's hard. We want to capture every moment. But while you're capturing every moment on your camera, you might be missing something by just enjoying the moment. So whatever you end up with, you know, you're going to do this on a monthly basis. Okay. So I've got this folder cleaned up. My master family photos was set for April. And I actually have May and June done too, just so you know. Now, I upload them to forever and I am set. I At the end of the year, I'll be able to make a calendar pretty easy because I can just go to the different months and plot pictures in. So you have a little bit of a, a, a system. Keep the habit going, all right? There's so many reasons why it's good. You're going to keep yourself familiar with using your computer and, and just working with folders. It's just good, good skills to, to keep up with, okay? And then at the end of the year, you'll have organized folders and albums to make that annual photo book, the calendar, or have the perfect collage of photos for your holiday cards. All right. Keep it going, because honestly, it is very easy to stop. And before you know it, three years have gone by and you have a worse digital mess. OK, so we, we've talked about the habit. Now you're excited and, and you're going to get going and you're going to, you know, start connecting things to your computer to copy or you're going to work, be working with your scanner and something happens, <laughs> a tech problem that just totally demoralizes you <laughs> or disappoints you or frustrates you and then you stop working. So we need to be proactive in this, okay? Be vigilant in monitoring your tech, all right? Use your programs routinely. Know what you have and where you have it. All right. Delete apps that you don't need. Consolidate and delete accounts. You know, we all have many emails that we've accumulated now. Let's try to narrow down what we're using. Replace old computers. When you're working with pictures and videos, you want to have a computer that has a good amount of space, even like a terabyte with a solid state drive is what I recommend, and at least 16 megabytes of RAM if um, possible, okay? And monitor your backups. You have to advocate for yourself and your photo collection. No, no one else is going to. And time is going to be your enemy. So we'll advocate for yourself. And then clean up and dispose of old electronics. Use Google and YouTube for searching answers. If you see an unusual file type, like this is a dot face file, you can search and get answers for it. This is related to facial recognition, and you'll get some ideas on what you can do with that. Know your lingo, all right? When you contact support, it's really helpful to have the right verbs. So moving is dragging and dropping on the same device, and copying is when dragging and dropping to a different device. Import, bringing pictures into a program. Export, getting them out. 
download is copying from a cloud site down to your computer. And upload is copying from your computer to a cloud site. And how did we learn this today? Be prepared for Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. I wish it weren't that way, but it's tech. <laughs> Everything's going to take longer than you expect. And if it doesn't, celebrate because you are lucky. <laughs> Tech support can help. Sometimes it doesn't help and sometimes it makes things worse. So you might want to verify and, and you know, be sure, you know, of, of who you're asking for and where you're getting the help from. Even Geek Squad, which is Best Buy support, sometimes they're answering the most immediate question without giving thought to how, how it will impact your work on your computer for the long run. And you'll get used to one thing and then it will change. We've been used to taking JPEGs forever. And then a few years ago, Apple changed their, their format, their standard format for taking pictures on an iPhone to hike files. Nobody was made aware of that when that happened. And all of a sudden we had a problem with compatibility. All right, things are gonna change, it's inevitable. <laughs> So get ready for the future because it truly is already here. We have deep fakes and artificial intelligence. And this is um, a picture of my grandma that's been animated by my heritage. And this stuff is coming. And, you know, if a picture can, if a company's artificial intelligence can scan your pictures and pull up all your dog photos for you, well, they can, they can, they know what else is in your pictures and your photos have an immense amount of private information about your life, okay? So you have to think about the privacy issues and take action today. Literally tomorrow could be too late. You could have a computer crash. Your external hard drive could die. Someone who's really important in your life could pass away suddenly and now there's no chance to share and celebrate the memories that you've had together or look back and identify people in old photos so take action today i'm here to motivate and and help and get you started and with that that's what i wanted to cover and i'm so happy to uh, turn it over to matt matthew and ask what um <laughs> what questions might you have yeah so yeah if you have questions definitely write them in the chat i know we have a bunch already um thanks so much molly mm -hmm. um who knew that we were going to get hit by murphy's law ourselves today right? <laughs> <laughs> it could have been timed any better mm -mm. um so we had a couple a bunch of questions um any advice on converting heic files um, there are several programs that, I mean, there's a lot of programs online. We use a program called XNView MP. It's a, it's a free download. So that's one. We also use Adobe Bridge, um, you know, to batch convert, uh, those, um, those are the two that come to my mind. I think on a Mac, you can sometimes, um, your programs will export hike files as a JPEG. So Milio does and Apple Photos does. Awesome. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, I know this is a question I think we answered actually in the last session, but if you wouldn't mind perhaps talking about the different options for digital storage, especially for hard drives and you know what brand you suggest. Sure. Um, external hard drives. We usually go with Western Digital, My Passport. Um, I, I, we've never had one of those um, fail on us. Not to say it doesn't happen, but they're a good brand. Yeah, Western Digital is pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked. Uh, I'd love to know exactly how to ask my family members to send me the full size photo, especially for non technical family members. <laughs> Um, I literally <laughs> tell them to go to their photos app and then find the photo. And then when they click the share button, you know, you get all sorts of options. They need to scroll down. If they can scroll down 
and find something that says link. So this one says copy iCloud link. You have to find the option that says link. And I don't know how else to um, help with, you know, with people who struggle with that, except that um, if they can find the link option, you know, that, that they can copy that and then text it. My mother-in-law, who's 91, she, she's, we've got her on doing it, so. <laughs> That's too funny. Um, would you suggest IDing individual photos? Oh, you sure. So with the ID, it brings to mind facial recognition. And, you know, I have a lot of people who are like, it's got to have facial recognition. And I'm less... I'm less a fan of facial recognition these days because it's so overdone. You know, I, I, I want you to identify the important pictures of the important people in your life. Facial recognition, like Google, it'll bring up everything and it won't always be right. And um, if you have a thousand pictures of your 10 year old <laughs> to try to pick out five, it will take you forever. I'd like for you, you know, in that monthly habit to, you know, favorite the picture or put, you know, put a heart on it and maybe take, you, you could do it then. Um, but to go through and, and have every photo, have every face ID'd, I think that's too much. Nobody can maintain doing that. Even the professionals, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, here's one I know we've talked about in the past, but what do you do with the originals after scanning? So I've seen about, um, I've seen three ways. Some people are okay to throw them away and you can recycle any picture that was printed with modern technology. If they were chemically printed, you, those aren't recyclable. Then the second option is to store them in, you know, a, you know, uh, a regular photo box or shoe box, you know, labeled. Um, the third option is to purchase an archival box that's photo safe. And those are a little pricey and they look nice. Um, so you have a, a few options. I, I, I don't think there's a right answer on it. It's what, what will you enjoy, you know, in five years? Would you like to have that box sitting on the table to kind of go through the photos? I do worry, though, that people won't mark that those photos were scanned. And then 10 years from now, someone's going to say, oh, I got to scan them. And we don't know where, you know, they don't remember. So it, when you do save them, put a sheet of paper in there that says these were scanned and where they're located so that the, the next person opening the box might be able to find them. I think this also kind of harps to that as well. I put my originals in scrapbooks by year. Should I go back and scan them all into a digital file? I mean, of course you should. And I have a great app to, that I would recommend to do so. And it's called Photomine. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, uh, right. I'm sure Molly, you would agree that, uh, you know, it's a great idea, obviously, to digitize your photos, especially, you know, and like, like she just said, you know, once you've scanned them, what you want to do with them, it's kind of personal preference. Some people, you know, scan to, you know, remove some of the clutter in their home. Some do it just because they want to have it in multiple locations. Um, but uh, it's certainly a great idea to put them in digital form. And also just because there's so much, so many things you can do with digital photos too, mm -hmm. uh, that you, that you can, you know, there's just more ways to use them, I think now than perhaps, you know, paper photos. Um, but that's a good question. Um, someone asked, uh, if I don't know who someone is in the photos, is there a way to use AI to find them? I, that's a pretty interesting question. Yeah, uh, I haven't tried it myself. And I, I, at one point, there were, I feel like there was a website. I, I'm thinking at some point, Ancestry is going to have that ability or MyHeritage. Uh, I don't know if it's live yet. Um, but I think it's coming if it's not there already. So I would keep an eye out for those two companies, especially I would think there'll be the first that would get that out. Unless Photo Mind's got it on there. <laughs> no, we don't, we don't have, we don't have that, that kind of magic yet, but perhaps at some point. Um, well, Molly, um, after three webinars, it seems like we've come to the end. <laughs> um, unless anyone has any last minute questions, I think, um, 
we are, you know, finally at the end. Thanks so much to everyone for joining for all of these different parts. Thanks so much, Molly, for, you know, taking us through this master class over three weeks. It's, um, you know, I think there's some great things here, really some great things here that people can learn and take away from this to, you know, really get a, get control of their photos. Um, and uh, we're so grateful to have you here and hopefully you'll come back for another web webinar down the road. Um, how does that sound? Yeah, I would love to. It's always great to. It's just nice that we have people who care and people who want to share. And and I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the webinar, uh, just before we go, we'll be uh, sure to send an email with uh, you know links and information from Photomine and from Molly. So if you're interested in um, you know, if you're interested in scheduling a call with her, you can do so. That link is on the, you can see that right there. You know, check out her YouTube page, check out Pixology's site, uh, check out uh, books on Amazon. Uh, so many resources and all those things will also be in the email. And of course, the recording of today's webinar will be on there. Um, again, thanks so much for your patience with, uh, you know, the issues, uh, the technical issues in the beginning. But um, again, thank you so much, Molly, for being here. And thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you soon with uh, another batch of webinars coming up down the road. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>